Oh, there we are. Oh, so we already had so. Well, we have people watching. Hello. Wow. Hello, everyone out there in Facebook land. It's me, your hostess, Tony Ohm Erm. And tonight, my very special guest is none other than Ovary Action. Hello. Hello, Facebook land. Hello, Tony. It's a pleasure for you having me. That, well, thank you for being here. So um, we're going we're gonna to wait. I see more people are, are, are joining. Wow. So, oh, Ashley J. Hi. My friend Tara. Hi, Tara. She loves the hair. Thanks. So is Kravitz. Says Gorge. Hi there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, oh, my friend Ben. Hello, Ben. If uh, anyone out there in Facebook land has questions for us tonight, please post them. I'm going to try and keep my feed there so I can see what, what questions people post. Oh, Le Alexis Flame. Hi, Ooh. Alexis. Sylvia Mosig, who I went to high school with years and years ago. No, no, no remarks. <laughs> Last year. Uh, Tony Avendola says, I look like the Long Island medium. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy. I'm sorry. Over it. Over it. Does the date December 25th mean anything to you? Christmas! <laughs> like hours of working. Uh, sure is. Oh, Lord. Yes. Sorry, I called her by her, her non drag persona name. Excuse me. It's okay. I go back and forth. <laughs> Forgive me. I, I, I'm old. You can tell. I'm wearing 60s hair. So. <laughs> it's completely okay. okay. It actually it happens to me all of the time. Mm -hmm. People a lot of times don't necessarily know my drag name and have grown up with me and known me as Stacy, so even when I'm in drag, they call me it. It's a, it happens all the time, and I always have to correct them and let them know, you can call me by my drag name, Overreaction. And they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, let me tell you. I have ovaries. They work. I overreact to every single thing that happens to me. And I remember it was about January-ish, I started doing drag. Right. My first show, Ginger Minch, had mm -hmm. me perform in her show for the weekend. So I was like, well, now I need to think of a drag name because I want to perform in drag regularly. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, hmm, what would be a good pun on words? I first thought of Stacy's mom, because mm -hmm. Stacy's mom's got it going on. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, nah, I don't want to use my birth name. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about Rubby Wrong, because Rub Me Wrong. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, Rubby? <laughs> yeah. no. And then I figured, I overreact ovary act but i'm like wait there's already a queen with that last name let me change it to action i have ovaries they act i cause an overreaction everywhere i go mm -hmm. so there we go that's my name there you go and quite coincidentally i have ovaries too but mine are completely dried up <laughs> <laughs> been dried up for decades oh. <laughs> Falls. So working back there, there was a whole bunch of 
people in drag for the show, and LaBelle was in it, Ivy was in it, I was in it four years before I decided to do drag, and it was just a beautiful experience. I thought the show was beautiful. I thought the whole cast was gorgeous. I was just amazed by the craft and the work that they put in, and I figured, I want to do this one day. And then the first person who's like, I would say a group girl I've seen was mm -hmm. Courtney. Courtney. I saw her about three years ago, 2016, and I was like looking and I'm like, she can sing, but she sounds like a woman, mm -hmm. which a lot of the times you don't hear. Mm -hmm. And I was just so shocked that she can sing higher than I can sing. And I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. She's quite amazing. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure Zoe Dunford would agree with you. Uh-huh. We all know how much Zoe loves Courtney. <laughs> yes. I remember I was going to meet her. I was so nervous that I was like shaking and just holding her hands. I was like, I love you. You're amazing. You're my favorite queen ever. Blah, 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 blah. And then I ended up seeing her again for the first time in over two years last week. That's right. I ran into her at a Pride event. I didn't know she was performing. I was walking into Batra's bar and then Courtney was running where he approached me and I was like, Courtney! And I <laughs> jumped in her arms and she screamed and she was like, recognize me. She's like, good, so good to see you. I'm like, I'm going to go perform on stage now. And then I was so nervous. I was just like, Courtney, are you singing? And she was like, yes, yes. And then she went up and sang. And then Ginger Minch saw me, because she was in the show. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what was happening. And she was like, hi, Stacy. And then Courtney was like, hi, Stacy. And then started singing Stacy's Mom. Stacey's and I was like, mom. Oh. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy. Oh, that must have been wild. It was. And Zoe was there, too. I told Zoe to come. Mm -hmm. I was like, Zoe, go to Boxer's Bar. I think Courtney's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And she went, and we had a great time. That was great. Yeah. That must have been fabulous. It was full circle seeing like the first queen from Drag Race that I've ever watched perform perform mm -hmm. again for the first time in years. Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, comments are not showing up on my iPad. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe it's because it's just like because I've noticed that like on the iPad the um. It's going a little bit slower than on the phone. Yes, there's a there's a there's a little bit of a delay. So. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Don't worry, folks. We'll get you later. Okay. So you were working on La Caja Fall behind the scenes. Were you, were you in it or just behind the I scenes? I was stage crew. Stage crew. Yeah. And that was what inspired you to want to do drag. Yes. So seeing all that. Seeing it's like I can perform on stage but I can have crazier makeup and hair and mm -hmm. express myself the way I want mm -hmm. rather than having like fit to a certain standard. It's like, mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I want to do that one day. Correct, correct. Now, traditionally, um, an individual such as yourself, people would think when they did drag, they would be a drag king. Yeah. But you are not a drag king. No. Let, it, let us be quite clear on that. Now, do you call yourself a drag queen, or do you consider yourself just a drag performer? I would say a dr full-on drag queen. Full-on drag queen. I want, yes. I'm a queen. Yes. yes. I am a queen. I got drag the crown. Drag queen. She's a drag queen. So, and uh, as we are learning, anyone can be a drag queen, you know, male, female, non-binary, transgender, uh, what are some of the other? Gender the other? queer, gender, gender non-conforming, non gender fluid. fluid. Androgynous. yes. So. Agender. Yes. So, uh, being being a drag queen is is open to anyone. So, don't don't get stuck in that little box. That, you know, you can only, you can only be a, 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 a cisgender male. It doesn't have to be. Um, and you consider yourself non-binary. That's right. Correct. Yes. And now now as when she's over me, I, I call, I'm, I'm like, hey girl. Of course. And, but now, when you're not over me as Stacy, uh, you prefer they and them as, yeah. your, as your pronouns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what precisely does non-binary mean to you? I think like non-binary means we're not fitting into the 
so social norms. Like we're not, we're breaking the gender stereotype. I don't see myself fitting in with any of the female categories at all. I don't consider myself to be a woman, but I don't consider myself to be a man. Mm -hmm. So I've recently come to terms with my gender identity, probably back in January. I first thought, I would say uh, two years ago, I started realizing I don't fit into the norms. I'm definitely not a cis woman. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, I'm not trans, because mm -hmm. I don't want to become a man. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, am I gender fluid? But then I looked, it's like, you're expressing as both male and female. And I'm like, I want to be neither. Mm -hmm. So I figured non-binary is just breaking the labels. Mm -hmm. Like, here's a label, here's a man, here's a woman, boom, nope. I'm me, I want to live my life as me. I see myself as just a person, just like anyone else, and that's what I see myself as. That's, that's beautiful. And, and I, you know, feel like you are um, kind of a, setting an example for a lot of uh, younger people nowadays because we see more and more young people identifying as non-binary, gender fluid, transgender. So it's, you know, I, I, I love what, what you do. I, lo I love everything about her. I just have to say, I'm a huge fan. I'm a, I'm a huge ovary fan. <laughs> Let's hear it I love you, Ruby. <laughs> she, lo she loves her too. <laughs> oh. And what does it mean to you to be a non-binary drag performer? Well, actually, non-binary drag queen. Um, as a non-binary drag queen, I'm setting an example that you don't have to be a cisgender male to do drag. Most people think it's like they think of a drag queen and think of it as like men in wigs, but it's not just that. Anyone of any gender orientation can do drag. And sometimes I walk up onto the stage and a lot of people give me looks. It's like, what is she doing here? She's not a drag queen. She's a female. And I'm like, have to, sometimes during the shows now, I've been giving the whole speech. I've made an entire number. I've helped Bia Brack, who's a local queen. She made me a mix about being non-binary. So I've used, I am what I am and gender binary you mm -hmm. in it. So it's like, it's showing that's like, there's a part in the song of my number where I'm breaking the stereotypes. I'm showing that I can wear girls' clothes when I want to, but I can wear boys' clothes when I please. Mm -hmm. And it's a big F you to anyone who tells me that to fit inside the gender binary. And I believe drag, you can be anything you want to be. Like, I don't understand why with drag that you have to be set in a certain box and a certain standard. It's like, oh, you're in drag, you have to wear this, you have to wear drag, that. It's like, I'm not a fishy queen. Like, I like to wear crazy makeup, mm -hmm. and then I'll, but then I like to wear my sequins. So it's like, I want to show, it's like, anybody can do drag. Mm -hmm. If I'm standing up here, assigned female at birth, performing, anybody can do it. Correct. And if they have any doubts, as soon as she starts performing, they're quickly dispelled. Mm -hmm. So, let me just put that out there. So, um... Hi Zoe, I see you liking everything. Oh, uh, <laughs> Zoe's your, fan. Zoe loves your sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> um, has it been difficult for your family to accept you as non-binary? Um, at first, yes, but I'm luck luckily and fortunate enough to come from a very loving mother and father who love me and accept me for who I am. Yay. Like That's how all, all parents should be. At first, when I was telling them, first I came out as queer back in 2016. At first, my mom always thought I was boy crazy and was having a hard time coming to terms with that, but then she said, you know what, I love you and I will always love you no matter what you choose to be in life. And then I heard told my dad, it's like, oh, who cares? <laughs> who cares? You're you. <laughs> That's and I just feel blessed that I live in a family that yes. love and accept me who I am. There's been many times where I've heard people have been thrown out of the house for not identifying as straight, for identifying as trans. And reading those stories break my heart and I feel for them. And I just yeah. wish that if there's any way that I could help them, mm -hmm. I'd be willing to help them in any way. Yes. 
Well, I, I think it's wonderful that your your parents are so accepting of you, which, you know, because you, she is a wonderful person, not only just a, a fantastic performer, but also a beautiful person on, on the inside. So, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that your parents are, are accepting of you as, as a person. So, if, if only everyone's parents could be like that, because there are a lot of um, kids out there that when they come out, they're, they're kicked out of the home. And, you know, and, and um, um, in the Imperial Court that I belong to, we, we, um, one of the organizations we help, Trinity Place Shelter, is is just for um, these these young, you know, LGBTQIA youth who have basically been kicked out of the home and have you know would be living on the street without you know some place like, like this for them to have you know a. a, a someplace safe, a, a roof over their heads, a bed to sleep in, food, I mean, so, which things that we tend to take for granted, but like, you know, one day without any of those is like, is unbelievable, to have, you know, so, so, that's, that's, I feel for them, I know, I know, it's terrible, it's terrible. it is terrible, yes. like, if I was able to, I would just adopt all of them, and bring them into my home, and I would just give them all the love, they deserve to let them do anything their hearts desire. Mm -hmm. I just wish that like some people in the world were more loving and accepting of others for who they are and who they choose to be. Mm -hmm. So it's when you you find the people that are like that. Those are the people that you gotta you gotta stick to. And the people that aren't, you just gotta kick them to the curb. So yeah. Just just one thing. I totally agree with that. Now, um, speaking as a non-binary drag queen. And I th you, you touched on this a little bit. What prejudices have you encountered uh, being a non-binary drag queen? I have encountered a lot. Like I, online, I've been like I have Twitter. I've been pretty open about it, and people have been writing to me about no, there is no such thing as non-binary. There are only two genders, male and female. And I've seen posts and people even texting to me and writing. There are only two genders, what you identify as, as fake. You are fake. You are a woman, and that's how it was still say. And reading that just, it hurts a lot. Because, but also I try to educate them and try to explain what it means, because I'm thinking, like, maybe they just don't understand. I want to try and reconcile with them. Mm -hmm. It's like, maybe they just don't understand or they're not educated. So I try to educate it. And sometimes some of the people that I have educated on it, their views have changed and they're able to be more understanding and they have asked me questions about it. Mm -hmm. However, like other people would still stay with their facts. I even show there's this video from MTV from a couple of years ago with Courtney Act and she's explained the um, gender and sexualities and she has a whole entire video on it. So sometimes if I'm like too tired of explaining, I'm like, here, watch this video. You will understand all about it. Mm -hmm. And someone even wrote to me, it looks like Courtney has not gone to school and doesn't know what biology is. And that just put me off. I'm like, okay, gender is not based on biology. You're, this is not biology. This is biology. Mm -hmm. No, this is biology. This That's is not. Correct. Sorry. Correct. This, this. This is not this is not biology, folks. So, but it's down there. Yes, and, and even it, doesn't matter. Correct. Men can have vaginas and women can have penises. Mm -hmm. it, why do we have to base it off of our parts to determine what we are? Mm -hmm. That's something that is just all kinds of crazy. And the thing that I find very rude is people that want to know what it what is down there and it's like it's it's nobody's business yeah. unless unless you want to become involved in a relationship with that person it, it has no bearing on 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 anything so i have a, a, quite a number of friends who are transgender and um I, i've had other people say to me oh well has has she had the operation and it's and i'm That's like it's wrong to ask that absolutely and i'm like, like why does it matter like some people, they transition when they need to. Some mm -hmm. people can't even afford to get testosterone or hormones to be able to transition. Mm -hmm. And it, 
why does it matter whether they're fully transitioned or not? Like, Correct. if you're trans and you say you're trans, you're trans. Right. Right. Yeah. And and you know it's it's nobody's business what you know what what is going on <laughs> below the belt, so to speak. <laughs> as I as I as I pull my dress down, so, so my husband doesn't doesn't run in here and say my dress is riding up. <laughs> exactly. It's nobody's business. Correct. Like, I've even had people go up to me saying, like, do you have a penis or a vagina? And then I'm like, oh, get the fuck away from me. Why does it matter? And, and, and it's, it's, no, it's nobody's business. It really isn't. So, or as, as Lady Lavelle told me, the only person who needs to know that is, is your doctor. That, <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's, it. that's, no, that's the, the, the only person whoever he needs to know. Unless there's, you know, you're involved in a relationship and, you know, you want to share that, that information. But, you know, the, the, the lady uh, living across the street, she doesn't need to know that <laughs> exactly. information. So, although I'm sure she would, she would love to know if she's, you know, drinking. Even I coffee. don't even need to know that kind of information. No, you don't need, no. No one needs, no one needs to know. If someone tell, if someone tells you that, you know, I'm, I'm male, or I'm female, or I'm not binary. That's what they're choosing to share with you, and that's all you need to know. Exactly. Right. Right. See, we get it. Why can't Why can't exactly. everyone else? Why can't everyone else get it? Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. So let's let's discuss some fun stuff. Yeah. So now, as a non-binary drag queen, I have seen you lip sync. I have seen you dance. And my favorite is she sings live because everyone knows Tony Holmgren has a has a warm spot in her in her silicone covered heart <laughs> for a singing drag queen and 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 also my my husband Frank loves loves your singing voice we both we both just love your singing voice. and I love your singing voice too when Tony walks into a room everything shines <laughs> she is the star on stage it's, it's the jewelry. <laughs> no. Pretend I lent her some. <laughs> exactly. Said, okay. Necklace, said, and bracelets. Said, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're from gonna Tony's bling you room. out. <laughs> we're gonna bling you out. Like now. I remember, <laughs> I first saw you perform. I was like, damn, she could sing. Thank you. Well, She's I, amazing. I, I practice a lot. I practice a lot. So, so. But do you prefer singing live or lip syncing? Honestly, it depends on how my voice is. Because sometimes, let's say, like, I've been to a, go to a drag show and I'm screaming, then the next day I have a gig. I would try and sing a few days before, see how it sounds. If it's, I can't reach the notes, it's like, I'm going to lip sync. Or it's like, I think I can do this, I'm going to sing. Like, here's an example, like, DragCon. I went to DragCon Los Angeles, so I decided... I'm gonna lip sync for the show that I'm doing like the day I get back home because I'm not gonna have a voice to do it. But now I, even most shows now, it's like I want to do both. But if I had to choose between lip syncing or live singing, I have to choose live singing. It's something different. Everybody lip syncs. Everybody drop drops. Not everyone has the guts to get up there and sing. True. True. And I've been doing theater since I was 10 years old. I figured. Let me show that theater slide. Let me sing. Mm -hmm. and, and she is a phenomenal singer. I, I just love when she sings. And I actually, after the first time I saw her perform, I told her, I said, I, I said, there's a song. I said, you've gotten to sing it. I said, it, it, it is just made for you. And she was, she was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, yes, 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 you have to do it. And then we did it. I think it was the first time yeah. at, at, at Creative Ministries we were doing a benefit for a transgender resource. Destroy all Center. genders. Well, uh, yes, the Destroy All Genders show. And um, she started, uh, she performed, uh, and I'm telling you, from Dream Girls. And uh, I don't know if you, if you noticed, but I was standing right in the wings the whole time. And I was, you were. I, yeah, I was watching you the whole time. I, I, was, I was so proud of her, and she just she just slayed it. So thank you. So you know, it's like I, I don't have any drag daughters, but you know, I I, I, I play drag auntie. So it, this was this was an instance where I, I was drag auntie. So I had like I went I you know told her she's got to sing that song. I said that this song is perfect for you. And it, it, and it was. You did an amazing, Thank you so amazing much. job. 
And that was like that was like one of the highlights for me of of, of, of the night was, was watching you perform that. So I guess I was like I was like I was like a I was like a proud stage mother. I was like I was in I was in the, I was like in the, in the in the in the wings. I was watching her. I was like, I'm so nervous, so nervous for her because I, I was like, you know, I was but, so nervous. But she slayed it. She slayed it. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Thank you. I had comments were up, and now now they're gone. I don't know. I don't know why I'm having so much so many problems with this. this I, see, see, there, there oh. they are. Yes, uh, Louise Luby. says over. You have the most amazing. Thank you so much, Luby. Why are you coming? I keep calling like, Louise Luby because. Twitter and like Instagram, it's Luby. It's like I feel like that's my nickname for you. I'm gonna keep calling you Luby. I'm sorry. Oh, my friend Rudy Greedy is watching. Hi, Rudy. So. Is that the one from Rudy's room? Yes. Oh, the TV show. Yes, Congratulations. Yes, the, 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 uh, the, uh, Island TV. Yes. I'm so excited to watch. That'll be that'll be starting August fifth, I believe. On Monday nights. What so channel? It's well, um, well, it, it's on Facebook, and then eventually it, it's going to go to probably uh, local cable. I think channel fifty-five. I'm going to tune in. Channel ten. I'm going to be setting my DVR. I'm going to be binge watching Rudy's Room with my popcorn and my mm. strawberry acai, and it's like those are my sisters. Yes. 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 Well, th well, this is actually going to be a, a different show, separate from from. from It's gonna be a lot of fun. So we'll have we'll have details on that. But I, so I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna hog I don't wanna hog. Tonight is about overreaction. So. You'll find out more details about Rudy's absolutely, room. Absolutely, absolutely. But for the next couple of weeks. Yes. Well, you just anything you wanna know about Rudy's room, just go to Strong Island TV right on Facebook. Okay. So now I have to ask you, who is your favorite local drag queen besides besides Tony Holmberg? You know, we all know she is perfect in every way. And, and who is your favorite RuPaul drag queen? Although I don't think there's, I don't think that's too much, uh, that's kind of a no-brainer, but. <laughs> Start with the local. Who are, who are your favorite is, local queens? I am very fortunate and lucky enough to be friends with so many local queens. Tony Holmberg right here. All of my Long Island drag sisters. Every single one of you I performed with or I have talk to you, have gotten the see before, and I love each and every one of you so much. I honestly cannot play favorites when it comes to you guys because you're all like a big family to me. And ever since I've joined the drag scene, which was not that long ago, you've welcomed me with such open arms, and I'm so grateful for all of you. And for all my New York City sisters, Chelsea Pierce, Jackie Cox, Paige Turner, Marty Gold Cummings, everybody who I've ever met, and seen before. I love all of you so, so much. And getting to go see your shows in the city and watching you perform and slay that stage just makes me so happy. Same for all of you Long Island girls too. I feel like I may be biased, but the New York drag scene is my favorite drag scene. And as for Rue Girls, I have been lucky enough to become very close with Yuwa Hamasaki. Mm -hmm. I see her at Pieces Bar pretty much every Friday and she kills it. I pretty much can do the choreography of all our songs now because I've been going to her show so much. I'll be seeing, she'll be coming to Long Island. She's coming to the Hamptons on Saturday, which unfortunately I have a gig, so I'm not going to be there. But if you can go, go see my girl, go see her. I, I actually saw Yuha like, before she like was really a name. It was like, um, I think it was like 2000 or 2004, and she, she, entered, a baby. she entered the Miss Long Island pageant. Oh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was actually the year that um, Erica Blaze won. So it was, it was, she was baby, baby. Yeah, yeah. She's not even that much older than I am. She's only like 27 ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. She must have started until like 13. <laughs> she, uh, she did a uh, Christina Aguilera number, um, Ain't, Ain't No Other Man. She, Yes. That. She, she, she was fierce. She, she does that all the time. She, she was, she, you know, she, she was fierce, but you know, but you know, she. Uh, her, like, you know, Erica Blaze was the was the was yes. the winner of that that night. Erica Blaze, she was, she was amazing. She did this whole like 
Wizard of Oz number, and she had, you know, dancers as, as like, you know, the Tin Man and the, oh my the, God. the Scarecrow. And, and I the, need and to the watch this. And I need I to see this. I don't, know if, I don't know if there's video of it. I mean, this I'm is... I'm going to look on YouTube this is, like, <laughs> this is like before even Facebook, you know, so... This is back, I think this is back in the, like, the MySpace days. <laughs> We're, we're talking old school. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> Unfortunately, back then I was in elementary yeah. school. My mom said you can't join social media yet. But then Facebook came a thing when I was in like it was been a thing since I was elementary school. And then when I was in fifth grade, I saw my mom was on Facebook. Like, mommy, can I go on Facebook? She's like, fine. And I just used it to play Pet Society and all the animal <laughs> games. I didn't use it for social media. Uh, oh yeah. About, do, you, do you think that you know in today's world like? Um, being in the drag scene, you've got to be on social media. Oh, yes. If you're on social media, you promote your gigs, you post stuff, that's how more people are going to find you. That's actually how I've been started. Like, there's been some shows I've done, I've been contacted through Facebook Messenger. And if it wasn't for social media, I probably wouldn't be performing at all. Emails, I usually, like, my booking fee, my booking info is in my socials. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> about you while she actually last week I went to go to Pride with her. We're back. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Hello. I don't, we don't know what we don't know what happened there. That was that was bizarre. <laughs> so I don't know why we are we, back. I have to oh my god, I forgot X out of this idea could be I think maybe it's something to do with two Tony home firms wa you're watching on the iPad and then oh. it's on the phone and then all of a sudden it's like it crashed and I don't know what happened. I don't know. I've, never, I've never had that happen before. Yeah. So, strange days. It's so strange. About you. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm old. I can't figure out all this technological <laughs> stuff, people. What the what, 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 I was about to say, you off, last week I went into the city. Mm -hmm. I stayed with my grandma for New York City World Pride. I went in the next day. You want messaged me and was like, I have some unused makeup. Would you like it? And like, I was so happy because I left my makeup home oh. by mistake. All my drag was with me, but not my makeup. So I said, yes, thank you. And then she ended up also giving me a wig. So a little nice. white wig with bangs. And I'm like, I cannot like thank her enough for like all that she's done for me. Like she always like, goes out of her way to hang out with me after her shows and she's so sweet and I have to say like if I had to choose an absolute favorite at this point it would be you on I can't so also she's New York City mm -hmm. and nice. she better be on All Stars and she better win. <laughs> All Star six. Five films already. But So that's her that's <laughs> that's her favorite. What what can we say? I have also so many like Honey Davenport, Sugar Cane mm -hmm. Fifi, Courtney Act, she was my very first favorite, mm -hmm. so I still have that soft spot for her. And Ginger Minge, Ginger took me to Disneyland. Oh, nice. She's so lovely. She's the one that gave me my first performance also. Mm, that's right, that's right. So I also, she's a big, big favorite. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's hard to tell because I love so many of the queens, but you won't be surprised to know that the majority of my favorite drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race are New York City queens. Well, especially because <laughs> they're easier for you to meet. <laughs> and also because a lot of them were our local queens before they got onto the show, so we've gotten to know them a lot better, right. sort of say. Right. What's that? Uh, we know we yeah, just we started. Did it. <laughs> that was that was that was one of the producers. The wig wizard. My hu my husband. Popping his head into like the video. I don't know. I don't know why it stopped. It's 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 Facebook has been very unkind to 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 the past the Tony Holmberg shows. Uh, uh, last episode with with uh, Ashley Jane, we tried to do um, a, a lip sync and it like it like paused the video because no, we didn't have that. the rights. We didn't have the rights to the Spice Girls song. Please, the Spice Girls should be should be happy that somebody's still playing. Exactly, the Spice Girls should be uh, across the UK in stadiums. Oh. They better come here because I will be like, screw my bank account. I'm following you on tour, and I would go to the Spice Girls tour. 
up. They, uh, I don't know why they do. It's 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 so silly. And YouTube is getting that way with um, with playing uh, music. Um, a lot of the influencers that I watch, it's it's like they're they're finding if they if they play, they they can't play any current songs or anything. You get suspended the too. Yeah, it, it's 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 like. I have a Twitter account got suspended in May. I post, um, I did an edit of Courtney Act eating a kiwi, and I put in Beat It by Michael Jackson. That's right. And then Twitter suspended my account. It's still suspended. I still can't get it back. As much as I'm trying with the appeals and everything, Ridiculous. I had to make a new account. Uh. I've lost a lot of follows from famous people, Courtney included. She follows me on Instagram, though, so I'm not that bothered about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I honestly don't really care. <laughs> like, anyone who follows me, welcome. Welcome. So since we've been talking about um, social media and how important it is to drag performers, where do you see the future of drag heading? I feel like drag is going to become more mainstream. Like I've been watching it. When I first got into drag, it was, I would be talking about it and nobody would know what I've been saying. And now I walk in the places and it's like, everybody seems to know about drag and everyone loves, loves drag. Mm -hmm. I think eventually it's going to become more mainstream. Like it's already mainstream now. Like drag race is on VH1. Mm -hmm. Soon it's gonna take over the whole world. Everyone you know is gonna be a drag queen <laughs> within the next hundred years. Pro probably. Mm -hmm. Although, although, although I don't, I don't know. Some of them, you know, we may have, we may have to read them. So. <laughs> oh, true. We'll have to read. Them. <laughs> So there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with a, a good read as long as as long as it's not vicious. That, exactly. You know, so, you know, like it has to be funny and sarcastic. It's, yeah, it's it's got to be it's got to be funny. And like, for instance, I I like spoken about this to uh, um, Bella Noche. I, I you know, it's like there's there's nothing wrong with like you know a, a good read, it's, especially if it's if it's if it's witty and, and, and intelligence because it actually shows that you know. You're not going to invest that much time in a good read on somebody unless you really like them. Exactly. It, it's like somebody that that you don't you don't you know care about. It's like there's you can't be bothered to to read them. But you know. It's true. If they if they're a good Judy, then then you want to do you know then then you'll you'll invest the time in, you know. Exactly. You know, you know, like uh, what was it? Um, uh, Ashley in, in her in her boy mode. <laughs> she, had, she was wearing those Nike slides. I'm still, <laughs> still reading her. Food. So those Nike slides. She's gonna kill me. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like, girl, I love you. I said, but but girl, those slides. She was like, don't read me, don't read me, girl. <laughs> I love her. I love love Ashley. Oh, speaking of, speaking of Ashley, would you would you like a little spritz of of the perfume cosmetics. that she made for me? It's Please. chaotic cosmetics. It's the Tony Home Perfume. Perfume. Pour no more. Pour no more. So ah. Like a spritz. Oh, this smells so good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Yes. yes. And uh, she actually, um, uh, last week at Ivy's uh, birthday party, she gave Ivy. Her I saw own that. Brand. It was. Uh, yeah, I think they had it on, on Facebook. The um, was it? Um, I think it's Dirty Stalls Fantasy. <laughs> yes. Or some, some, something like that. So, That's exactly what it is. Um, you have to. You have to tell. You have to tell Ashley Jade. You need your own. You need your I own do. Perfume. So she needs her own perfume, girl. Yeah, Ashley. Ashley, you better. If you're watching, you better have. You better have that Saturday night. I can't night. see anything. The comments are too small. <laughs> yes, I know. Morgan Sparkles says, "I I love pressing. Pressing. Which kind? Balsamic, blue cheese, brush vinaigrette, <laughs> ranch. That's the kind of dressing I love." <laughs> I'm all for the ranch dipping ranch. sauce for mm. my chicken and fries. I don't like to put dressing on my salad. I don't like how it tastes with the vegetables, <laughs> but I like how it tastes with my chicken. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, so that's where you see the future of bread headed. Um, what do you hope to accomplish in the future, both in and out of drag? Mm -hmm. Let me start with out of drag, I hope to become financially stable, live on my own. Never happened. Not on my own. <laughs> oh, hell Sorry. No. Sorry, I bur just burst that bubble. Hell <laughs> no. But I'm going to try. I want to finish school. I'm currently mm -hmm. finishing my associate's degree. I'm graduating next month. Yay. Yay. I'm in my last two classes now that I need. One of them's public speaking, so hey, right now I'm practicing. 
I'll get that A. And I also want to accomplish moving out of my parents' house because it's so expensive to move. And I feel like if people since you're 21, you still live at my parents' house, I'm like, they charge me rent. I'm not living free anymore. Mm -hmm. Got over that. There are people a lot older than you still living at home with the rents because they can't they can't afford you know a place on, yeah. on their own. So it's so expensive. Long Island is very it's a very expensive place to live. So. Oh yeah, and um, also I want to finish my degree, mm -hmm. but I do want to become with my drag. I want to perform full time. I want to get to that point where I'll be able to be able to afford to perform full time. I want to get booked more. My schedule is completely open after next week, so. Book her. Book a bitch. Book her. I can sing live, I can lip sync, I can do what you want. I've even seen her death drop. You can book me for as little as just a bowl of spaghetti or no, just letting me walk into the club. Not for, no, she's not working for pasta. She, no. She needs cash. At least. <laughs> she needs cash, people. I'm literally open to everything. And, just when, and when you see her perform, <laughs> Tip her. Tip her. Tip me. I drive everywhere on Long Island. I need the money for gas. <laughs> you know, it costs me $60 a week for gas because oh. I drive so much. Both my day jobs require me driving my participants around. I need gas money. She needs gas money, people. I also want to get some vocal lessons and prove my voice some more. My goal is to have a one-woman show at the Lori Beachman Theater. No. I've seen local queens do it, group girls do it. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to make my own show and just do my thing for an hour and help learn how to speak more clearly. Mm -hmm. I also want to learn how to sew. Oh. I need I to learn how, how to that. sew. Don't know how to do it. Can't sew, can't do my own wigs. Thank God I have a <laughs> husband that can tease a wig Thank like God. I'm in business. I also want to <laughs> learn how to tease my wigs. I want to learn how Me to too. sew. <laughs> I want to learn. I want. I'm still working on my face. It's like my makeup is changing every day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like I want to do natural. Today it's like a little bit more. I am. I've shaved my eyebrows off for drag, but I'm actually going to be growing them back because I want to see maybe if I use my brows for drag, how mm -hmm. that would look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I have you watched? I. I I told you to check out um, Lucy Garland oh, yes. on YouTube. Have you, did you get a chance to watch any of her? I haven't videos? yet. Oh, you're, she's an amazing makeup artist, and, and it's like she'll recreate um, looks of like uh, famous drag queens. Like she'll she'll paint herself to look like Raven or oh my God. Aquaria, Aja. Um, it's it's like you know, and, and like her own That's creations, and it's like, and her makeup skills are. Fierce. So, so I suggested you, you watch her. Um, you know what? What advantage you, you do have, though, girl, is you don't have to shave. <laughs> Let me tell you. Nope. Oh, uh, you know. I just need to do that little bit of. I have this little thing. It's almost like it's a laser hair removal thing. Mm -hmm. I have to do that maybe once a month because nothing really grows over here. Yes, but you don't really have to worry about the five o'clock shadow coming through, you know, oh, as, as, the, you know, as the gig gets later and later. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I've been with Well, um, at three in the morning. I've seen this five o'clock. You've seen the five o'clock shadow? shadow? Yeah. yeah. And Well, um, has the perfect facial features for it, so that it doesn't does, even affect that it. That does. Yeah. Spent the whole entire Pride weekend with Well, um, it was crazy. Bye. Oh, Bart Chiana is with it. Say, saying I look amazing. Thank, thank you, Bart. Uh, Kristen Wisher says, Hamburger Mary's was the largest employer for drag queens in Tampa. Ooh. I better get myself over to Florida and do some Hamburger Mary's. Stuff. She was so sad when they went out of business. Oh, I've heard about that. Alexis Mateo was posting about it, and now she's in Vegas. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that was her residency. She was there all the time. Mm -hmm. There, and I think St. Petersburg, too. Well, ho ho hopefully you will get to be, you know, doing that a full, full time. I actually do what I call a one woman show at, in in the nursing home. Yes. So I, I, I'll, it's like a whole hour just of me, you know, singing singing the oldies and like the the, uh, the residents they, they they love it. They really do. They I think know. it's beautiful. Yeah. You're doing that. Thank you. So if you if you ever get a chance to perform for an audience like that, grab it. It's 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 a very uh, 
inspiring experience, and it's, it's also it's very rewarding. And uh, and they're a very they're a very forgiving audience, they're very very forgiving. So. <laughs> Uh, my other goal is I want to perform in the UK so bad. I have so many friends that I've met through the internet who live in the UK, and it's my goal to be able to like do a UK tour of the shows because the UK's audiences are crazy for drag. Like I think they love drag even more than here. Like I've seen that, and I'm like, oh my god! I think every person in the UK loves drag. It's incredible. And don't more drag queens sing live in the UK? Okay. Yeah. I, 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 they do. That's what I heard. So, so you're already you're already on the right path for that. So, if anyone in the UK can help book me, <laughs> do it. You have your passport? Yep. Oh, she's, it's she's, good till 2023. Passport. She's past, passport ready. She's ready to go. UK, I want to come for you. UK, I don't know if I have I don't know if I have any friends <laughs> in the UK watching. So, there's <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Well, I'm your, your your friend Louise. Yeah. So now now my friend too. Um, London, most of all. Mm -hmm. I want to do one. I want to do Edinburgh Fringe. I know one of my favorite local queens, Golden Delicious. She, congratulations to her. She just got her own show. Good job at the Edinburgh Fringe. So if anyone nice. is going to find themselves in Scotland, go see Golden. Mm -hmm. Go. Go see her. She's phenomenal. I'll tip her. Yes. <laughs> always always tip your your drag queens. We, we, we need that money. It's, it's, it, it, take, it takes a lot of money to do this, folks. Okay, what is your current favorite number to perform? Um, lip syncing wise, my non binary mix. I've done okay. it, I would say, about three times so far. I love doing it because I like, there's this one part where I'm taking everything off and showing what I look like out of drag mm -hmm. as well. So usually I would save that number for the end. Mm -hmm. And it shows I am what I am. It's like, I'm. This is me behind all the makeup and the wigs. I'm not what you think. I'm not a man. And I want. I even let my hair down, and I show them, this is me. And singing wise, it's definitely. And I am telling you. <laughs> I may say it's my Tragantes impact. Yes. <laughs> um, I may or may not be doing it this week. Shh. Can't say what I'm doing. Can't say. It's a secret. If you um, want to find out, you have to come to the show. If you want to find out, come to the rail in Smithtown tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Tomorrow night. 10 p.m. Or sick this in Valley Stream, 9 p.m. Saturday. Saturday. Find out. I'm not going to yes. say a word. We'll, we'll be performing there together. Yes. So, so we performed there. When, when, when was that two last months show? Two months ago? I think it was like two months ago. Yeah. Yes. So. It's one of my very first shows. Mm -hmm. And that... That was, I couldn't believe how packed the place was. There was people standing they outside. They were standing, they were standing. So. There were some people sitting and then like even the whole thing, like I couldn't even go through. It was like, no, no. I wanted to be twice as many people <laughs> for a Saturday. Yes. And no. I think Ashley's got that in the bag. Yes. She's their spokesperson. She's mm -hmm. doing a coloring thing too. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's, that's my, yes. My, my best little sis, Miss Ashley yes. Jade. I, lo I love her. She's like my, she's like become like my partner in crime for for, for all these <laughs> crazy things. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, the the show at Sipis is just so much fun. We had we had a blast the last time. I'm it, so excited to so, go back. So oh, Louise Arnold says we don't tip in the UK. It's coins. Oh, they We'd don't be basically tip. throwing coins at people. Oh, those currents. I knew coins. about that. You know when I heard her, they love to buy merch. You need merch, girl. You need, you yes. need overreaction merch. I need, I need my own merch too. I we know. should make merch. We need merch. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I will have merch. Oh. I might. I still need to find like someone who's really good at drawing me. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of friends that can. I already have some who I'm considering to do it, and then I pay them. Obviously, they need their point too. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's designing merch needs to get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and let's say I put it on Redbubble, I would actually split the profits and make a like, half of the profits go to them as well because they design the merch, they should get profits too, mm -hmm. not just the person who's on the merch. It's, it's, it's funny because I saw that um, uh, Balls McMoon is Balls, hi! Watching. She's watching! Um, a, a, another uh, drag performer who is not a gay male. And they were, there's somebody else here on Long Island. I don't remember. Is that Labyrinth? Labyrinth. And Molly Percocet also. 
think that's it. So, so it's 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 uh, it's great how we're seeing these uh, drag performers who are not you know you know traditionally um, cisgender gay males who come coming on the on the scene. So I think, I think that's a that's a great awesome. thing. So one thing we, we don't really have is. Um, not, not too many drag kings. We have Megan Mayhem. We do have Megan Mayhem. Next guest. I love, love yes, Megan is going to be my next guest. Um, I love him. She, Megan is the premier drag queen king of, of yes. the world. And actually, Megan will be at the rail. Yes, yes with, he will. With you tomorrow. And he has a powerhouse voice. Oh my Wait God. Wait until you hear him sing. Oh. I was crying backstage at CM. I was like, oh my God, his voice is so beautiful. I know. And, and, and when, when the last time I did the rail and Macon was there, and Macon closed the show, was, you know, playing guitar. So Macon, yes. you know, can play guitar, you know, accompany himself. So, but yes, Macon is an ama amazing um, drag king, amazing singer. So he closed out the show at uh, Creative Ministries with. Um, this with, is me. This is me. From the uh, greatest showman, it was just uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. So, but uh, yeah, there's there not too many drag kings on on Long Island. There needs I've to noticed. be more. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why so, no, that is. There should be a lot more. So, any is there any I area where? New York City. There, I, mean, Brooklyn, I would assume a lot more there. In the Brooklyn city. is as a big drag king scene. Mm -hmm. We have so many talented kings. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like I've seen a whole bunch of them perform before. They're so talented too. Mm -hmm. Like they deserve more appreciation, I believe. Oh, absolutely. Drag kings deserve the world. Absolutely. They're awesome, and their craft. It's like I'm always blown away by the talents. Mm -hmm. Watching drag kings, I love, I love them, and I'm so glad that we're gonna, we're starting to have. Drag kings enter the Long Island drag scene as well. Yes, yeah, good. Makes oh, me oh so I, happy. I remembered one, um, Prince Alarming, but but Prince Alarming moved down to Florida. Now he's a Florida kid. Now he's, yes. Well, well, well. Actually, um, um, Prince Alarming actually um, had a baby. <laughs> and uh, it, it was funny. I, I had I had I told uh, um, Tara is is uh, Prince Alarming is really. Uh, I had said when 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 Tara was pregnant, I said, "You've got to like, you've got to do, you know, uh, your drag king and, and with with the pregnant belly." Yes. I said that would be amazing, but she, she she never got to do it. I was like, I was like "Oh no!" I said that would be great. And that, I said that would be like perfect, like black meal material for when the kids like a, you know a snotty sixteen year old. <laughs> it's like you know you know you know are you gonna do those dishes? I'm not I'm not doing the dishes. Oh how about I show this picture you know to all your friends <laughs> and then I, I'm pregnant drag king with you and you know, the kid will be like no oh, please I'll do the dishes I'll oh, do the dishes and maybe it can be a mother child duo. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that enter the scene. Like if I had kids I would Wait until they're at least like 16, 15, like you want to uh, book them in shows. Put <laughs> them in. There's actually, there was, um, you know how they have those videos on Facebook from uh, shows on the UK? There was actually this one where um, a, a father, um, his, his son was oh, a I drag saw queen. That. Yeah, and, and they put him in, in drag. Yeah. And it was like, oh my, oh my God. That like, made me cry. I was, it was watching. It was, it was so like, touching. It was. It was. And there was, there's another one. There's um, drag syndrome too. They have like a group of people with Down syndrome who perform in drag. Mm -hmm. Drag syndrome is amazing. I've seen their videos and their documentaries. Oh, as I've, never well. seen, I've never seen that. You should look it up. Oh, I, like I, it's I drag syndrome on Instagram, YouTube. Mm -hmm. There was um, another one. I think I saw it was today or yesterday. It was a little short film about um, a, a soldier who was coming home and his son had now trans transitioned into a girl and they were showing um, her in, in school and like um, you know she wanted to be called Allie and they they kept calling her by her, her boy name and she didn't want, want to be like she went to go into the into the girls restroom and one of the teachers was like Robert and you know That's hard. yeah and you know like when they came to her her test they had the boy name and she like she like crossed it off and wrote her girl name, and um, like, but but like her her friend um, was like 
uh, showing her how to like put like you know a, a barrette like in, into her hair and uh, and then when she when she got home the father was uh, was already home and he was like looking out all the, the pictures of of his now daughter and um, the daughter walks in and you know she sees the, the father and it's the first time the father is seeing her as a as a girl and so she sort of like gets scared and is back in the way and the father just runs over and just you know hugs her and picks her up it was like yes it's like turn me into a blubbering mess I'm girl gonna, I'm gonna cry I, was like, I was like oh my god it was just it was so it was so touching so it was so touching to see like you know uh, a, a parent being you know accepting of, of, their, of their child did I just see Dylan coffee is watching oh, yeah. I miss you! Dylan Coffee is watching. You know, Dylan's graduation party, we had local drag queen perform for him. Those two years ago, I went to his high school graduation and we had a local drag queen, I think it was Valkyrie, you know, from um, upstate, and she performed at the, the Fine Gravity number dressed up like Elf above oh. for a graduation party in the backyard. I was like, amazed. Um, Anna Michaels actually did that at, at Off Key Tiki. Oh yeah. I, I actually I had like a ton of ton of pictures that, that I took that he did that with with, with Bella. And he That's amazing. Painted himself painted himself green and, and had the you know the the, the witch's outfit and, and all that and I'm like uh, oh something my God. you will never see Tony Holcomb paint her paint her face in like some crazy color and in like your, your non-binary mix. You will never see Tony Hawk. <laughs> Start taking stuff off. I'm sorry. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna happen. Maybe my husband would kill me if I if I if I pulled a wig off on stage. <laughs> He'd kill me. Kill me, girl. Oh lord. You don't, you don't you don't know you don't know what he's like. He's like he's like so he's so stern. He's like always cracking the whip. He's like oh, Go. my dress. These wigs. Is my dress pulled? Yes. He um, worked so he, hard on them. These are not ones for on the floor. This. Depending, my wig's in grace never. That is my most valuable wig. Mm -hmm. This I got at like Lamb Wigs, Gross Buffalo Mall for like forty dollars. It's gonna be thrown. <laughs> it just, it just needs, it just needs a just needs a little brushing. That's all. Yeah. Well, this is from when Bella teased it because um she took my wig for a week off KTP and let her borrow it. Oh, I remember. Yes, I remember so that. It still I looks that. like the way she teased She's, it because I haven't worn it in a long time. That's right. So That's I need right. to, um, I want to make it bigger if yeah. possible. Well, there's plenty of, um, on, on YouTube, tons of tutorials showing you how, you know, how, how to do makeup. makeup. I, I've learned so much, so much stuff about drag makeup from, from YouTube. And, and my, my makeup has evolved quite considerably <laughs> since the first time I had a degree. The, like, one of the first times that I had it, like, paint myself. Because the very first time I did it, I had a friend do the makeup. Because I was like, it was for the a chorus cabaret and I was like, I was like, I'm not going out there looking ratchet. I was like, I, I have too much of an ego girl. I have too much of an ego. Uh, uh, the, the second time, it was like, the eye makeup was so bad, but it, I was doing um, Fire Island, so I, wore, I just wore sunglasses. <laughs> nobody, nobody had to go bad. And then the, the third time, it was so so, but it literally took me eight hours to get ready. Oh my god! Eight, eight hours. hours. Eight hours. That's how. That's how. I can't even imagine. I, I I don't. I mean, I think of it of it now, and I'm like, why did it take me that that eight long? Eight hours. And it was, and I didn't even like how 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 the look looked. So, you know, now I'm like, you know, I can, I can pretty much do everything in about two hours. Yeah. You know, that's how long it takes me. Yeah. So. Two hours. Two hours. When I, before I shaved my brows, it used to take three, four sometimes. Don't. It took two hours just even locking my brows. Now, are your natural brows are they thick? Yeah, they're really thick. So, well, you need to you need to let them grow in, but you got to make your appointment to have the brows waxed. See, I have my brows waxed now, like every every few weeks. That's what I've been doing, and they're still big bushies. Yeah. Well, the more the more you do it, they will. I'll probably they they get them waxed down. every Thursday. It's they like it's down. Thursday. I'm gonna get my waxing. But because I've been letting them grow in, because I want to try and use my brows mm -hmm. when we drive. Mm -hmm. Maybe like only 
block half of it and use the person starting, or I might just use I, the regular I've routes. Seen, I've seen that done, which I, I've been like tempted to try it, but I just <laughs> never get around to it. So it's like so, sometimes I'm like, oh, I have to like experiment with something, but most of the time it's like I don't have time to experiment. I've just got to get ready for a show. And that's like the last time you really want to be experimenting is when you have to get to the gig and you don't want to be late. You know, like during DragCon, I was experimenting making brows with my um, dip brow because I got dip brow to try and use, and then it always comes out so messy. And, like, and then I rip my brows off, I'm like, that's it, I'm doing a brow look for DragCon. Mm. I give up. Mm -hmm. I actually, I've been using um, wig brows quite a bit. But I actually, I actually drew brows on today. You know, like, can't let, I can't let my brow drawing technique, you know, wither completely. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll draw brows today. I was not, not thrilled with them, and I knew I had bangs. <laughs> I, like, I did a completely browless look today. Mm -hmm. No brows at all. I did glue down whatever brow I have now, because now I have little wispies. Because mm -hmm. I've been letting it grow, and I put glitter all over them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, you know, I just glue, glue them down with, with the glue stick, and, you know, it, it takes a little, once you have your full brow in, and you want to glue down, it does take, you know, a, a little bit of technique. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, no, actually, I, I, I can do it in about mm, 10, 15 minutes, so I, I've, I've got it down now, because I, I do it so much, I have to glue them down so much that, you know, but, uh, you just, the, the hardest part is like getting them smooth. That that's like my brows are really thick, so my glue down is never completely smooth. There's always some some texture there, but you know, unless somebody is gonna be like right in your face and staring at the brow, and I mean, and, and you know what? If they want to be that close, then they need to be paid for the makeup. <laughs> so don't don't read us for our brows, okay? Nope. Um, Just, somebody loves us. Like Someone they, said they I love, love you. They love, they love us. Okay. Um, that, that's, an, that's another thing. Um, I know I, we've talked about this before. I get a lot of, quote, chasers. Oh, same. Hit, hitting me up, you know, online. And, and, and I was, I'd asked you, you know, do you get a lot of, a lot of that happening? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Like a random guy would message me and like, hi. I think it's normal, right? High, and then they send me a picture of my dick, and I'm like, uh, you know, I'm gay, right? I don't want that, and I block. Like, if I see the messages are gonna get really creepy or sexual, I block. It's even I've even had girl chasers come to me. Really? Yes. But like the people who've been coming to me are like, eight, seventy-five years old, <laughs> old, creepy men, or like creepy men, but then they're oh. always from like India or a foreign country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It makes me so uncomfortable. I, I now, if, like, if I look at the mutual friends, if I have, if it's less than, like, 10, I'm not going to accept you if I don't mm -hmm. know who you are. Yeah. Just so that fear is like, probably one of those big chasers. Yeah. And, and I know if, like, if you see the profile and it's just, like, they're saying, like, picture, like, and there's, and, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's, like, there's only, like, three <laughs> posts and then there's, like, nothing else, I'm, like, no, I don't need. I don't need to be friends with that. With it's that. probably just a picture they put. It's probably, it's probably not even theirs. It's probably not even theirs. It's probably something from Google Images. Oh, I know. It's, it's horrible. Then what's creepy is sometimes they say, "What are you wearing? Send a picture of yourself. Here's pictures of me. Send pictures of you. It's like yes. I don't know you. I don't want to oh. send. If you want pictures of me, just look at my Facebook. Exactly. <laughs> Frank Morelli says you're both fat. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Wig Wizard. Thank you. No, this is a uh, different Frank. Oh. This is it's hard to read because the comments know, are so, so small. Yeah, like this is a, this is Frank, Frank Morelli. Morelli. Thank Frank you. Morelli. Mm. Uh, oh, and, and your friend Louise says you accepted me. With That's because I've known you from Twitter, <laughs> and we've been friends before. We were Facebook friends, <laughs> so I've known before. you. Yeah. So she let you. She let you slide. In. I let her slide <laughs> because like I know them from Twitter, from drag, from fandoms and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. I know you already. Yes. Welcome. Uh, next question. Have you ever performed a number that afterwards you decided you didn't like? Oh, yeah. I um, tried to do this number 
I'm thinking when was it, like what show? I think I did a show in Madrigal, I think I did three or four numbers, and I did a lip sync performance to Alaska's Leopard Print. And I would I hold, there. I held pictures of things in Leopard Print, and doing it, it was like, I don't think this is for me. Like, I love Alaska, I love doing Alaska numbers, it's just this one, I'd have to get a projector on a big green screen to make it work. Because when I was throwing the little pictures, it's like, nobody really is going to look at the pictures and be able to decipher what it is. Well, in, in all fairness, it was for... A, Bikers. A, well, yeah, but it was an animal rescue um, group, which I think is why you thought of doing a, uh, like a leopard-themed song, am I, am I correct? Yeah, but... So, but yes, when we pulled up there, it was like, it was a biker bar. My, oh, yeah. my husband was like trembling in his boots. He was like, he was like, oh my God, they're going to kill us. <laughs> however, however, they were like, they, look they loved, they, they, they loved it. They, they loved the, the audience. But I will, I will tell you this. When I walked in there and saw the audience, I immediately looked at my set list and I said, I had more of a Broadway kind of uh, numbers plan. I said, no, I gotta, I gotta change this. And I went, Should have done that. And it's like, that's one thing, one thing you'll, you'll learn. Like that number, actually, if you were in like, maybe in like a, a bar. Probably pieces in, bar. Or in, right, in pieces or so. You have to, that's, a, that's one thing, uh, the more you do it, you'll, you'll be able to gauge an audience and determine like, oh, I, I know this, this number will work with that audience or that, this so number I, won't. So not, not that it's always like foolproof, not that it's always foolproof, foolproof but you, you just, get, the more you do it, you, you develop this like gut feeling. Exactly. So. That's what I've noticed. It's like, I now have chosen songs, it's like, I will just sing live depending on the venue, mm. but I will lip sync at a club. Mm. That's why I sip this at the coffee shop, it's like, I'm going to sing. Yes. Only. It's, it's great I'm to only going to sing. Yeah. But I'm doing the rail tomorrow, it's like, I'm going to do both. Good. And I'm doing, one of the numbers I'm doing is specifically for a club or for a pride event. And it's not singing, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it. She's going to do it anyway. Uh-huh. I'm very excited. Yes. Okay. Your favorite bougiest makeup product and favorite drugstore product. Because, you know, I, I, love, I love my makeup. Ashley Jade and I will. It's like I'll be like I'll be like texting her. I'll be like uh, I'll like be sending her like a picture of a palette that just came out. And meanwhile, she's actually at Ulta, like buying another <laughs> palette. <laughs> and she's like, "Girl, why are you sending this to me?" I see you post of all the Jeffree Star palettes. It's like you're the first one to get all of these. Yes, I am jealous. Yes. <laughs> so, which is your favorite bougiest and favorite drugstore? Bougie. I just got the Alyssa Edwards palette from Anastasia. Oh from yes, Hills. yes, I have that. It works so well. Love it. I the love pinks. It. Mm -hmm. My favorite is Beast. Mm -hmm. Like I use Beast like crazy. Mm -hmm. That's like my, my favorite shade. It's just, I think it's pink. Mm -hmm. I use two pinks and a yellow constantly from the Alyssa Edwards palette. Yes, it shows up palette. well on the eyes. It doesn't stain. No. no. James Charles palette. I use. It works well, however, the colors stain your skin for at least two or three days. But it's my favorite to use because the colors come out so vibrant. It's like, I'm going to keep using those. And then I have this other one called Tarte Under the Sea. And there's a section with glitters. And I put it on my eyes. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I like the, um, the Stila, what I do with glitter. I like those, the Stila, the uh, glitter and glow or whatever, whatever it's called. Because unlike regular glitter, like that stuff, it like just wipes away. Like regular glitter, it's like, I can't, it, that stuff, it never goes off. away. I know. It goes, it's like two, it's like, you know, two weeks later, you still I still <laughs> find so glitter cute. on my I'm like, I'm like, I, it's I like have Claire's the glitter. The Claire's uh, glitter, I don't recommend because I used to start using it when I started doing drag. Mm. It comes in these big bags and I would use it as body glitter. Everywhere. It's still Everywhere. in my wigs. I was washing my oh. wig today because I have like these set days like every two weeks I do a big wig wash mm. and then I was washing it and I'm like this is glitter from two months ago in my wig. It's horrible. I 
use Trixie Cosmetics for my glitters now. I got them at Dragon. They wipe off immediately. They don't stay. Like, I'm wearing the pink one. I'm wearing Skipper today. Skipper and Malibu. Malibu's the blue are my two go-tos. Also, Pony Up, that one goes everywhere. That one is not, like, one I would use as much. But Trixie has a whole makeup line. It's great. There's even a lipstick named after my birth name. I was talking to Trixie about that, and she was like, wait a minute, your name is Stacy? I'm like, <laughs> and then drugstore? Drug primer. Store. I, my primer is from Five Below. Believe it or not, they sell these little primers at Five Below for like $5, and I use that before I put on any makeup, and it works like a charm. I've, I've never been to Five Below. They don't, I don't think there's any out here in summer. I don't know. But it's cool, everything's five dollars and under. Right. And for other makeups the other makeups don't work at all. The primer works. The others no. Yes, I actually I, I didn't use to use primer, but, but then Ashley told me she said you should use you, you really need to use primer. It protects it protects your skin somewhat from, you know, your pores from the, the makeup, you know, seeping in and, and all that. So so now I use primer. Ashley J told me to. And she has her own cosmetics company. Yes. She knows what she's talking about too. Yes. She made my she made my perfume, whore no more. Yes. Uh, uh, makeup product you hate the most. What I hate putting on the most? Mm -hmm. Glitter. Glitter. I love glitter. I love how it looks like. It's a love hate relationship. I hate putting it on. I hate taking it off. Taking it off. I love putting it on. Mm -hmm. But then when it's time to take it off, it oh. goes everywhere. everywhere. My first show. When at Off Tiki, I got glitter in my eye glow. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. in the um, dressing room, I was getting out of drag, oh. and I got a big piece of the Claire's oh. glitter that I used to use in my eye. Oh, and Annie, Annie Mandel, she was like, go to the bathroom, run it underwater. Mm -hmm. And I ran, and I was doing it, and I was like getting it out. Oh. And I'm like, uh, it's painful. Oh, that, that's that's cool. why I hate glitter. Yes. Glue, also. I hate applying eyelashes. Sometimes it takes me 10 minutes to just put my eyelashes on because they'll slide off. You'll, you'll get fast. You'll get faster at that. You'll yeah. At that. So I used, I, yeah, I, when I was first doing like eyelashes, it was like, it was, it was a struggle. But everything for me with, with makeup was a struggle because I had like no experience whatsoever. A lot of, a lot of drag queens, they, some of them, have been makeup artists and then oh, decide yeah. to like you know they're gonna they're gonna go into drag so they that's they, not me <laughs> yeah me me either like I had I had no clue about makeup but you know and I don't even watch makeup tutorials like a lot of people I just wing it and like see how all, I'm gonna play with my face all the time it's like before I before I go to bed at night I'm like watching watching makeup tutorials and, and my husband Frank is like uh, uh he's like well, watch one of your tutorials I'm gonna go downstairs and have a cigarette. <laughs> So and I, and I watch I watch a tutorial. I, I just love I just love. I went to a makeup class. You are during Drag on NYC. She did a makeup class, and that's where I learned how to uh, do my stuff properly. You know how she does her contour with a hotel room key card. She mm -hmm. puts it up to her face, and then mm -hmm. I'm like, I started doing that for my highlights now, so I can get that perfect. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. Like, it, I'd rather go to a makeup class in person and watch online, because in person it's slow paced, easy. Online I'm watching, it's like a five minute cops wild, and I'm like, I can't follow this. Well, I like the online because you know I can like rewind and, and watch the, you know, something multiple times. Like if I, if I can't, yeah. can't quite get it. So, so I actually probably my the most I've learned about makeup was probably from Miss Fame. Well, she's amazing. Yes. Yes. So that's how that's how I learned that I have hooded eyes. So I basically like most of my lid, I just I just black it out, and, and, and you know, put the eyeliner and, and let, let it dry. And um, because you know, if I try to do like a like a little wing, forget it. It'll it'll it just gets all over everything else. So I do very very heavy wing now. And, you know, like the. Frank is like, are you doing those triangles? <laughs> I'm like, it's not a triangle, it's a wing. Exactly. It's a wing, okay? Triangles. Triangles, triangles. Okay. Triangles. So now we, we've talked about, you know, past drag con. What are your plans for the next drag con? Well, 
I am hoping to perform during DragCon weekend in the city. Ooh, nice. I want to try and get booked in the city and perform there. I am going to go and drag all three days, of course. I got the VIP pass. Um, I'm excited because obviously I get to see this. this I love DragCon, but then DragCon New York City, it's like all your sisters are there. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing like everybody you know all here for the same reason, to enjoy and have fun. You meet up with your online friends. It's amazing. This year, went to DragCon LA for the first time ever, and I loved it. It's just the atmosphere just makes me so happy being in such a positive environment. And obviously, if you don't know where to find me, go to Yuwa Hamasaki's booth. I'm always there annoying her. And <laughs> we always bully each other. We read each other for filth <laughs> all the time. I've helped her out, set up her booth many times. Ooh. So if you want to know where to find me, who knows, maybe I'll be working there. Ooh, ooh. Well, I, I think I'm going to go like one one day. I can't, I can't do three days. <laughs> I understand, yeah. but but you know, especially with my husband, especially especially with my husband. I mean, after the first hour, he's gonna be he's gonna be like, where can I sit down and have a cigarette? <laughs> so I have I have that to deal with. So which which would you re which which out of the three days would you recommend as the, the best day? Go on the Friday. It's less Friday. On the Friday, okay. Because um Saturday Saturday it is insane. Okay. But out of all the days I've experienced. Saturday is a really long day, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't want to be there that long, mm -hmm. then like the Friday, mm -hmm. if you have like general, it's only four hours. Mm -hmm. Saturday, it's eight. Oh. What would Frank prefer? Four. I go Friday. <laughs> the lines won't be too long if you want to meet any people. Mm -hmm. Lines won't be too crazy mm -hmm. because most people just go on the weekends because there's a lot of kids go to drive on and they have school. Right. Right. And I'm happy that I have VIP because Friday we get two extra hours away from the big crowds. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, what does VIP actually get here? You get the cut lines. Oh. So, like, they have a big general admission line and then mm -hmm. they have the VIP line. Mm -hmm. And if you're going on the VIP line, you don't really have to wait that long for Queens unless it's like Katsy others or Trixie. There is no separate lines, you have to say. Um, but yeah, I was able to meet Adore Delano every day with my VIP and I was oh, nice. so happy. Do you like, you know, are there like some queens, we won't name names, that it's like, there's like, yeah. kind of like nobody waiting to like, like meet them? And I'm not going to say names. Don't say names. I don't want to say names. I'm not saying names, but yeah, and I always go to them because I feel mm -hmm. bad. It's like, mm -hmm. there's queens with big lines and then there's some of the root girls that like, don't have a line. Mm -hmm. And I always want to go and I sometimes even sit with them for 10 minutes and I chat with them, make sure they're feeling good. Mm -hmm. Like one of them that I went to, she hurt her knee. And I ended up like making sure she was okay. I'm like, this is an LA, I'm like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do? And sometimes like the queens of the shorter lines are actually the nicest ones to meet. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have to sit and meet like 500 people at a time. You get more time with them. You can sit and chat with them until you see somebody come up. See, see I would feel bad for somebody who's like, nobody's on the line and like they have to see like all these other girls and like the lines are like you know a bad. mile long and like you know, i want to meet bad. the queens that like that have the smaller lines or even mm -hmm. no lines i will just go up to them and have a conversation buy some of their merch mm -hmm. like i always buy at least something i want them to get their coin you know the drag queens they don't get paid to be a drag con the brew girls they have to pay out of their own money out of their own pocket to be there oh. they pay for their booths they pay for their transportation they pay for everything you have told me the only thing they get for free is their Ubers. Wow. They, you have to pay for everything yourself. So this is why you have to pay to meet Queens even when you have their passes. Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to make the money back from the booths they got and the merch. They want to make the money back to help profit. And, and as, as, as we know, it, drag is not a cheap hobby Absolutely or profession. Not. It's, it's not. It's not cheap. Nope. So that, well, that's that's nice that you, that you do that for these girls who aren't getting you know as much attention. So you know, I would I would feel bad for you know to see that myself. Yeah. We'll see if we have any any last comments. Uh, is watching is watching. Ethel Ethel Levine said, "Love you. You are amazing." I don't know if she's talking about. She's talking about you, you of course. Me or or both of us. You. I'm gonna assume both of us. I'm gonna assume Tony. I'm gonna assume. You're the star. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! So where, 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 yeah. Oh well, well, we're at about nine.
9.19, so um, I think we're about at the end of our, of our interview with the wonderful Ovary Action. So um, tell us, tell everyone, where can they find Ovary Action? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Ovary Action NYC. It's spelled the way it's pronounced, O-V-A-R-Y. Of course, you know how to spell action. And of course, any person who knows how to spell can say NYC. So you can find me there. And Facebook, I just made a new like page, Overreaction, pronounced by the name. And if you want to friend me, I'll probably accept everyone who's watched this live. There's, I have this background story. Facebook wouldn't let me use my name. Mm -hmm. because they thought it was inappropriate and wasn't a name. So when I was setting up my page, I originally did Avery Axman, and then LaBelle said, why don't you write it how it's sounded? So it's, oh, I don't even know what it is. I think you have it. I can't, I had to write it the way it's pronounced, like Ovary Action. I think it's like O-V-U-H-R-I-E. I think O V. O V U H R I E, and then it's A C T S H O N. Yep. That's how. That's how. I it had. Is. I can't believe Facebook let me do that, but wouldn't let me use my real name. What, what is wrong with the word ovary? I know. I, it's like oh, if a person's private part, we can't use it. I mean, that's like that's no that's sense. an internal organ. It's not. <laughs> I mean, it's like a pancreas, or you know. <laughs> Why, why are you playing us Facebook? Why Facebook? Why? I don't understand. Like, oh. I was able to use my real name for everything except oh. Facebook. Oh, it's, so, it's so silly. And, I know. It's and, crazy. And uh, upcoming shows. Oh, this week you can catch me. Tomorrow night I will be doing a few numbers at the rail in Smithtown mm -hmm. alongside Bella Noche, Megan Mayhem, and Stella Virgin. It's Doors open at 9 p.m. There's a $5 cover charge. Shows are at 10. It's going to be awesome. Yes. And Saturday, you can catch me with Tony Yay. and some other fabulous people at Tip This and Valley Stream mm -hmm. for the second show. The second show hosted by Ashley Jade. It's going to be amazing. Last time, it was packed. Ah. Crazy. So you yes. better get there at least like half an hour, hour early. Yes. If, if you, you want to sit. If you want to, if you want a good seat. Yes. And if you want to see. Yes. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna fill up, and it's gonna be probably end up being standing room only again. So don't, don't say we didn't warn you. Otherwise, I have nothing until the end of August, but I can't talk about that gig yet. Oh. You wait till it's announced. Shh. Not it's a saying secret. anything. Not it's saying a anything. It's a My uh, schedule is completely open, so. Book me. So yes, please. So if you got a you got a gig and you want and you want to book her, contact her, hit her up. If you so, want me to sing, you better book me. Book her. Okay. All right. Well, Overeem, thank you so much for being my guest tonight. Oh, <laughs> now I'm flying, girl. Oh, I think Lord. it was me. Lost the know. middle. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> it's okay. These are coming. These are good. These are getting ready to come off. So, but that, thank you for being my guest of tonight. Of course, thank I, you I for loved, having me. I loved having you. She's one of my one of my favorite of the new up and coming drag queens here on Long Island. So, and uh, her favorite song to perform is the one that I picked for her. Nana, 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 nana. So yes. <laughs> so, thank you all for watching. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what happened with the Facebook glitch of losing the video. I, I don't know if we lost that. Maybe you'll be up on your know. page, I hope. I don't, I don't know. So we'll if not, we still have a good 75% of our show. Yes, so, um, which, which I will save and then it'll end up being on YouTube, so. So, so anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, the next episode of the Tony Home Perm Show will be Monday the 29th, and my very special guest will be Long Island's premier drag king, Megan Mayhem. Megan Mayhem, who you will be performing tomorrow. with tomorrow night at the Rail in Smithtown. Yes. So, and as far as my shows, just go, just go to my page, people. It's, it's, it's all written there. I'm, I'm, I'm too old and too tired to tell you <laughs> all that stuff. It's not Facebook. 
Why you gotta be bothering me? Why are they bothering me, girl? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Overy. Thank you. And come, come see our, see us at the gigs, and, and tip us, tip us. I uh, drive. I need money for gasoline. Please. <laughs> Good Bye. night.